On November 20th, 2019, I left the doctor's appointment and tried to go to school. I say tried because as I left the doctor, two strangers blocked my path, forced me into a van, and took me to Salt Lake City, Utah. In Utah, I was handed off to two other strangers and forced into another van. It was only then was I told my parents had decided to send me to wilderness therapy and that I would be in their program for 8 to 10 weeks. I was there for 13 weeks. For 13 weeks, I lived on a mountain range in below freezing temperatures. For 13 weeks, I was forced to hike miles, clean up utensils with dirt, and give away my shoes at night so I wouldn't try to run away. For 13 weeks, I was strip searched and regularly photographed by the adult staff. After the 13 weeks were up, I wasn't allowed to go home. Instead, I was sent to another program in Utah, a therapeutic boarding school, and I lived there for six months. It was nine months before I was allowed to graduate. In the nine months I lived in Utah, I was allowed one trip back home. In nine months, I was allowed to see my brother in person for four days. I am one of the thousands of survivors of the troubled teen industry, and this is my story. Since her experience, TS has become a youth rights activist, determined to ensure no child has to experience what she went through. I could have walked out of my treatment center when I turned 18, but that means that I would have been homeless. The way these treatment centers for children work, parents will sign over custody of their child to the center. But yes, I technically could have left. But many of these centers are making tens of thousands of dollars per month per student. And it's much more profitable for them to keep you there than to let you leave. Many parents who have children in these centers are encouraged to financially cut off or even disown their own children if their children sign themselves out when they turn 18. Another girl in my treatment center turned 18 and tried to leave, but the staff took her phone away so she wasn't able to contact any of her friends to come and get her. So when I turned 18 in this treatment center, I had two choices. Number one was sign a piece of paper saying I was there voluntarily. Number two was be alone and stranded in Utah with no high school diploma, no cell phone, no money, and no way to get back home. It wasn't much of a choice. The programs are designed to force compliance and coerce behaviours. Its impact can be heard through this letter sent to her family from the retreat. Dear Mom and Dad, It is beautiful here and freezing. We are on a mountain in Utah. It is also actually a desert. We sleep in tents and everything is out of doors. I haven't seen any Mormons yet. I'm on the lookout. I am not doing well. I hope to be home soon so I can celebrate the holidays with you. I'm sorry for yelling at dad in the car. I want to work to have a better relationship with you both. I've been disrespectful to you a lot and I'm sorry. I've also been crying a lot. I'm being honest with you. I want to work on having a better relationship. I also want you to know that the idea of staying here and not coming home really, really hurts me. I talked to my therapist in a couple of days, so I'm looking forward to that. We're about to go on a hike. Dad would like it. The conditions of the treatment centres left many of the children, both physically and mentally, fighting for their lives. I'd spent the last six months in a Mormon-run children's treatment centre in Utah. I wanted to leave the centre when I turned 18 in April of 2020, but I was told that if I left, my parents would disown me, and I would be dropped off at the nearest homeless shelter. So I signed a contract saying that I was there voluntarily and I stayed. In the six months I lived at the treatment center, a therapist there was fired for inappropriate sexual conduct towards his own underage clients. Several of my friends were hospitalized and one almost died. Her cries for help and medical attention were ignored by the only staff member there because it was her day off of work. At my treatment center, if you didn't make your privileges, you had to sit alone at a table for 24 hours and weren't allowed to speak. I was punished for saying no to staff, disagreeing with them, asking them why, asking for a pad, saying oh my god, eating a snack before the approved time, forgetting school supplies, and going to the bathroom without permission. Three years after I left the treatment center, my parents disowned me anyways. Thankfully, TS's activism has helped cause change to the therapy programs. One of the oldest and best wilderness therapy programs in the country is now shutting down. Earlier this week, Chris Tarver, the executive director of Wingate Wilderness Therapy, sent out this email to all staff at Wingate. Chris Tarver cites a shifting market as the reason Wingate is closing. He doesn't cite are the numerous allegations of abuse and neglect that have come out against Wingate over the years. Wingate is only one of over a dozen TTI programs that have closed down this year alone, and what none of them will tell you is the reason why they're closing down is because of us. The shifting market is caused by advocacy work. It is caused by survivors of the troubled teen industry speaking out about their experiences and sharing with others how bad their experiences were. 
And it's not just the work of survivors. It's also other people online who are uplifting survivors' stories, advocating for them, and amplifying their voices. And I just want to take this moment to extend a heartfelt thank you to everybody watching this video. To everybody who's ever liked, shared, interacted with a post about the troubled teen industry. To my incredible mutuals, many of whom have survived wilderness therapy and residential treatment programs, including Wingate. I am so inspired by every single one of you, and change would not exist without you. TS's harrowing experience of being placed in a wilderness therapy program seems like something taken out of a horror movie. But unfortunately, programs like the one described exist all across America, and they're used as an alternative for parents who just find it too much to handle. TS's story is truly heartbreaking, but thankfully her videos are reaching a wider audience and shining a light on this dark secret. Some programs like these are already beginning to shut down, in part thanks to TS raising awareness. Now, the comment section could not believe the ordeal she had been forced through, but they were inspired by her tenacity, saying, I absolutely love your videos. You're so inspiring and amazing. Someone else said, I'm so sorry, you shouldn't have had to go through all that. As always, thanks for watching Happiest. If you like this video, then be sure to follow our Instagram and TikTok pages for more eye-opening videos like this. And of course, if you have any of your own clips that you want to share, be sure to send them in.